Hey everybody, how's it going? We're over here in the Super 8 in Abbotsford, ready to go to Doxa, and my friend just said that we should just steal these pictures because they're so cool. I said take. Take? Okay. <laughs> There's a difference. There's a difference. <laughs> anyway, everything you need to know about Job chapter, what am I on now again? Five, six, and seven starting now. everybody thanks again for tuning in for uh, our through the bible project job chapter 5 6 and 7 tonight this conversation between job and eliphaz right now and then later on a couple of his friends come in but <laughs> justin's trying to get out of the picture here where are you justin boys say hello to the people hello hello people yeah so eliphaz is continuing on uh he was the last guy to speak last time we were talking in our first session here and he's still going some of what he says is totally true and actually totally awesome um the thing is what he's missing is the truth behind what's going on because really it is a mystery to both job and eliphaz and his friends pretty much everybody else as to why this terrible tragedy has actually happened to job it's a mystery he notes he notes something really and this is this is the wisdom of the time for wrath kills a foolish man and envy slays the simple. And I've seen the foolish taking root, but suddenly I cursed his dwelling place. I mean, basically, foolish people kind of get what they, what's coming to them, okay? So I've seen this happen, you know? People mess up, I mean, they kind of do stupid things, and then, have, you know, bad things happen. That makes sense. I mean, one plus one equals two, right? Here's another truth. Yeah. And he's trying to comfort, he's trying to comfort Job. And he's, and he's hinting at it. He says, as for me, I would seek God. I would seek God if it was you. And uh, I would commit my, my cause to God. So, Job, you really need to pray about this. Have you spent time in prayer about this? <laughs> Which is good to do. But it's assuming that Job hasn't. It's assuming that Job's done something wrong. Even more so. He gets more to his point. And, and this is... And this is totally true. And I think this is actually a beautiful piece of scripture. It says, Behold, happy is the man whom God corrects. I mean, that's true. Therefore, do not despise the chastening of the Lord. And, that, and, that, and that's totally true. We shouldn't despise it when God corrects us. Um, <laughs> so don't despise the chastening of the Almighty. For he bruises and he binds up. He wounds, but his hands make whole. God's our Father. When his children really step out of line, he steps in and he disciplines, not out of any kind of sick way, like wrathful way, um, but really because he loves you. And like anybody who has children knows that if you don't discipline them, they turn out like little hellions. Well, God doesn't want you to turn out like a little hellion. So he's going to discipline you. And it's in total love so that you might, yeah, grow up, be blessed. But what his point is here is that God must be chasing you because you did something wrong, Joe. And of course, we know, we, we get the inside scoop right off the bat that that's not the case at all. Now, how does Job respond? Well, I don't think Job really knows what's going on either. And I mean, really think about it. He's lost everything, not just property. Because I don't think that Job's the kind of guy that would just necessarily mourn over just property. But it's his kids, his entire family, minus his wife got wiped off the map I think you'd be pretty upset I think you'd be normal to be devastated to 
be completely crushed. In fact, he starts off and says this, Oh, that my grief were fully weighed and my calamity laid with it on the scales. For then it would be heavier than the sand of the sea. Therefore my words have been rash. For the arrows of the Almighty are within me. My spirit drinks their poisons. The terrors of God are arrayed against me. He's just pouring it out, man. Yeah, he's just pouring it out. And his buddy's there and he's just like, you know what? If you had any idea how much it hurts right now, how much you know grief I've got on my shoulders right now, like if you weighed it up, man, it'd weigh more than the sand of the sea. I'm, I'm in a heavy time. I'm in a heavy, bad time. And, but here's where Job's mistaken. He says it was the arrows of the Lord. The arrows of the Almighty are within me. And my spirit drinks in their poison. So he actually thinks that perhaps yeah, God is doing this thing to him. That God might be punishing him for something. And the whole time through the rest of these chapters, he's trying to figure out what he did. You know, like, what is my sin? He doesn't know. He's, and his prayer is just like, God, I mean, if I've sinned in any way, can I help me see? Because... You know, this is devastating. I don't know why it's happened. I mean, just think about that. Like, there's a lot of things that happen to us in life that we just don't understand and we wrestle with. Bad things happen and we're kind of like, was it our fault? What did I do? I don't even know if I did anything. You know, Lord, search my heart. You know, show me if it's anything I've done wrong. And you know what? Sometimes it's, it's not that you've done anything wrong. Sometimes it's because you've done everything right. And this is just another test of your faith. And you might be like, why does God do that? I'm not too sure. And, and maybe it's just to show the world that he is good. Maybe it's to show the principalities and powers that exist in unseen worlds that the knowledge of the Almighty can sustain you through the most difficult times of your existence. Sometimes we have done wrong, you know, and God will put his finger on it. But sometimes it's like, David said, search me, O oh God. You know, show me if there's any wicked way in me. You know, maybe we got to pray that today. You know, just Lord, show me if there's any wicked way in me. Because I don't want to be wicked. I want to be holy. I want to be like you. I mean, sometimes you know farewell what you got to deal with. And then it's a matter of God, help me deal with it. But sometimes it's like, has something happened? You know what? I, maybe I wake up in the morning. I'm like, oh, you know what? God, I just want to be holy. Help me on this journey. You know, I'm not satisfied where I'm at. So if there's anything that's holding me back, any kind of sin, any kind of shortcoming of mine, weakness, whatever, Lord, help me overcome it so that I can be closer to you and be more usable and moldable. Why have you set me as your target? <laughs> and of course, the answer to that is because is Job, there's none like you in all the earth. Because I know even if I let the devil at you that you won't curse me. Because you trust in my goodness. You know who I am. And I know you might not understand. You might be wrestling with what's happening to you. But by no means are you going to leave off the faith. And follow some other God. But you're going to continue to be my servant, Job. I love you. Jesus loves you. Thanks for tuning in. And yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. Peace. Actually, we're off to Doxa. Some crazy praise party in Abbotsford. Should be really good. Praise party the wrong thing. What, do you th what is this, Doxa? Worship event? Worship event. It's just a worship event. It's a worship event. <laughs> on, uh, on their face, on their uh, Instagram, it says Jesus, period, music, period. Jesus, period, music, period. Doxa, Abbotsford. We're going to it right now. Chicka, wicka, wicka, chicka, da.